I don't. <laughs> I don't have a super formal presentation and I want this to be a two-way conversation. We all do. So you can interrupt me at any time. Um, yeah, you know, we have some um, some screen images to share with you. Sorry, I'm just reading the message, um, which I'll go over in a second. But, you know, I at any point, if there's a question or you don't understand what I'm talking about, just raise your hand and you can come up here and ask the question. So, um, we have gotten a lot of emails from all of you. So um, again, my name is Chad Hansen. I should have started with that. I'm with Sustainable Nine. Um, I have some of my colleagues sitting over here, um, Ryan, Paul, and Mike. So if there's a question that I can't answer, they can um, hopefully help me out with the answer. So, um, but uh, just to give an overview for the new people on the call that weren't at the uh, the public hearing last Monday, um, what were proposing to build here is a four unit condominium building. This is not a rental building. This is a building that will have four units that will be for sale. Um, it's located at 4352 Zenith Avenue South, which is the, the lot um, directly to the north of Wooden Ship Brewing, if everybody knows where that is located. Um, it's kind of a pie shaped lot. It's 60 some feet in the front and then it pies to the back. And so, um, I think the first thing we should probably just touch on, because it seems to be a source of confusion amongst a lot of people, is the the way the property is currently zoned. Um, and it, it is, this is a confusing uh, time within the city because we're in the middle of essentially the transition to the 2040 uh, new, what do they call them, the built form districts. Um, and so in the old code, everything was essentially like R1, R2, R3, R4, and so on. Um, and it was a little bit easier to understand what you could do in each of those um, different zoning districts. The 2040 plan, which was passed a couple of years ago now, and is in effect, um, has this property zoned as what's called Corridor 3. And so the Corridor 3 zoning is meant to, this is a zoning that the city um, put on this property and others out that are typically adjacent to more commercial districts like what we see on 44th Street. Um, most of the rest of the properties to the north are uh, zoned interior two. And so interior two has more restrictive zoning. Um, but I think as everybody probably understands, the 2040 plan allows for three units by right is the word, the way they uh, phrase it um, on any lot in Minneapolis. Um, but when you step up the zoning to things like corridor three, the density um, goals with 2040 get that much greater. And so um, I think there was some confusion initially uh, by some of the neighbors and rightfully so. It's confusing to me. I always have to ask my business partner, you know, what does that zoning district mean? It's, you have to kind of live and breathe this stuff every day to really understand what can be done. And so I don't pretend to know all those rules. Um, but corridor three, in a sense, because of this lot size, it's a pretty large lot. It's not your standard 40 by 128 foot lot. This is, is a much larger lot than that. It's a little over twice, twice as big as that. Um, would allow for, depending on unit size, of course, 20-ish, 20, 20 to 30-ish units and a four-story building to be built here. And so I think that's a good thing to just set the stage for. That's not what we're proposing to do, um, but I just want to make sure everybody understands that um, had we wanted to do that, that would have been allowed by right, and we wouldn't have had to have any parking at all in this building. Um, so we could have put 20-some units very small micro units made them for for rent, and then we could have uh, had no parking. And so the uh, all the tenants in that case um, example would have been um, uh, parking on the street instead of in the building. And so to quickly summarize our project, I think it's probably just best to just show an image of it, for, especially for the people on the the, the, the call. I'm going to share my screen here. It's so so tiny on my screen. I apologize here, but. Um, so this is the, the four unit building that we're proposing. Um, so on the left side, there's two units and on the right side, there's two units. Um, it is a two and 
the way the city um, again classifies things, this is considered a two and a half story building. And the reason it's a half story is because the third story is essentially pulled away from the front and sides of, uh, and, and also in parts of the back of the building from the actual plane of the, um, uh, the overall building. Um, and so that helps from a street, you can see where this, this image is kind of taken from. It's as if I'm standing on the sidewalk across the street. Um, but if I was standing on the sidewalk directly in front of this building, it would probably, other than the two stair towers there that you see in the left and the right, you would not notice that, that little bit of glass that you're seeing up by those people on that rooftop deck there. So the human scale of it will look and feel a little bit different as you're passing by on the front. Um, and so tonight what we've done is we've been hearing all of your feedback via email and in person. And so what we're gonna try and show today hopefully is some, some of that feedback being reflected in some revisions that we've done um, since we last met. Uh, by no means is it complete or finalized. And so that's why we're having this meeting is to elicit additional feedback. Um, I know we're not gonna make all of you happy with the, the you know, we can't possibly make all the changes that you requested, but I think we got a pretty healthy amount of the changes reflected in the plans that hopefully you all agree that um, we've made a good first attempt at um, collecting that feedback and incorporating as best as possible. So um, I do have some cheat sheet notes in front of me here on my phone. Um, and then what, could one of you set, remind me where we saved the, um, that GIF? on the network could you just look it up and let me know I, can't, I forgot to bring that up so okay. A, okay sounds good um so uh starting the, th the first thing maybe to uh, uh several of the neighbors put together a really nice list of concerns and i'm going to actually put those with your permission i'm going to put those concerns up on the screen just so we can kind of talk to them and again i don't mean to be a one-way uh communicator here but um if anybody else wants to jump in they're more than welcome to do so. It's so hard to see that. Okay. Is everybody in the Zoom call still? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So these were these were um, essentially taken verbatim. Um, these were from four of the owners, I believe four owners to the back of the property that we own. And so there are eight specific requests. Um, and there were other requests too, but this this was a nice summary, I thought, of of pretty much all the emails we've received. And so I'll just read them out loud quickly. And more, uh, the neighbors were requesting more respectful setback to provide space between the building and the adjacent property lines, making the backside of the building a light or white color and providing a living wall with beautiful plants, um, moving the elevator to the middle front or south side of the building. The elevator is the tallest element in the building. Um, moving the HVAC, that's the air conditioning units and pads to the front, south side or roof of the building out of our line of sight. The outdoor units are ugly and noisy, incredible, include noise abatement for the HVAC systems. Um, number five, please confirm that there'll be on-site water runoff mitigation. Number six, provide pre-site engineering analysis and light renderings from inside of each of our homes per Paul Trius. Uh, offer to Stephanie prior to construction. Um, that was just a side conversation that our colleague, my colleague had with one of the neighbors here. Um, I can explain that more in detail if we get to that. Uh, consider the placement of the egress staircase and its location in the setback to be flush or inset to the building rather than further into the setback. Mitigation for light pollution, consideration for the light that the that the windowed stairwell on the west side of the building may impose on adjacent properties. Specifically, we're concerned about the lights being on in the stairwell after dark and how this will shine unwanted light into our backyards and homes. So I'm gonna do my best to address each of those just verbally, but I might refer to the images here and try and show where we've made some of those changes as we go along. So um, the first one is honestly one of the most challenging ones because in order to fit four units into this building um, were we were already pushing our limits of where what we could fit into the space. And so I think we've done a pretty good job of 
shifting things around and shrinking. And what you also have to understand is we have underground parking in this building. And so in order to uh, engineer the proper slope and not make it a skating rink in the winter time, and also to allow for the turning of the cars once they get under the building, there's only so much that we can do before we just are simply out of space. Um, I should mention, I think it was mentioned in one of these points here that we do have an elevator in the back of the building that serves all the floors of the building. Um, one of the things I mentioned at the um, public hearing at City Hall is that our goals with this project are two, are two major goals. One is uh, to make this as an accessible building as possible and also to be as eco-friendly and um, as healthy of a place to live as possible. So we're a sustainably focused design build firm. Um, we do that with the majority of our projects. Sometimes it's client specific. They don't always want to do some of those um, things just because it costs more money. Um, but in this particular case, I'm going to just rattle off a few of those eco-friendly and, and um, accessibility uh, elements that will be in this building. So quickly, um, I mentioned the elevator already for accessibility. Um, that, of course, uh, um, also means that the hallways and the um, the ramps to into and out of the building from the parking garage are accessible for wheelchair access. Um, the showers in the, the units themselves don't have curbs, so they're um, accessible uh, for wheelchair access. Some of the counter heights are set to be uh, more uh, accessible. Um, from an eco-friendly perspective, um, we're planning to have uh, your standard bat insulation in the wall cavities. It's an eco-friendly bat, actually. It doesn't off-gas any formaldehyde or anything like that. But then on the outside of the building, what we're doing differently, and it's a new kind of building science technique here in the US, we're wrapping the entire building with two inches of rock wool insulation. And so rock wool insulation is a byproduct from um, the, uh, it's kind of like a waste product that comes out of the, the formation of concrete. Um, and so normally it would just go into the landfill and this company has created this product that basically acts as a very, very good insulator for energy, but also for sound. Um, and it essentially wraps the entire um, building in a, in a nice warm blanket is the way to think about it. Um, if anybody, just as a side note, if anybody's familiar with our projects that we've done here in Linden Hills previously, um, our first kind of small multifamily building is literally right across the street from this. This is a three unit row home right over here. So I encourage you to check that out when you have a second and walk by it. Um, the scale of that, I think, personally fits in really nicely to the neighborhood. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm just going to point it this way just so you can hear I, that you're an eco friendly um organization yep. my worry has been the trees that are there are yep. you able to save any of the trees and yeah we'll, we'll get to that I'll, okay. I'll for sure cover that um and it, it will help to potentially show you the site plan because a lot of the trees that you see along the parking lot with wooden ship and our property are actually on the city owned property so we can't touch those essentially our property line starts about two feet into that uh, grove of trees on the south side. So the vast majority of those trees are on the property of the cities. Um, but I, I forgot to mention too, the, you know, there's a whole nother side conversation that's starting to happen around the, the future of the former trolley line that is uh, used to come through that space. So for those of you that were in the previous meeting, we talked a lot about that, but our goal is to hopefully work with the city. Again, we're not in control of the trolley line, that's city owned property, but I think we can all agree if you're familiar with that parking lot, it's kind of an eyesore. And I think what we're trying to get back from the necessary, city. However. Necessary, however. Necessary, yes. Yes, but I think what, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's opportunity to still beautify that parking lot and create a walking path for all residents to use, similar to what's across Zenith from what we have there um, on the east side of Zenith, there's a nice, if you have, if you're not familiar, there's a very nice uh, concrete pathway with a lot of um, native plants and stuff. And so anyway, that's what we're hoping to work with the, um, the city and the park board specifically on. Now we haven't had an opportunity to meet with the park board specifically on that, but I have heard that they already have plans to potentially address that in the future. Um, what we're offering is 
our design services and some, you know, a monetary contribution to help make that happen. And so I have heard from a lot of the, the neighbors that are specifically interested in that trolley line uh, area. And all I can say tonight is that I don't have probably the answers that you're looking for, but just know that that's a great interest to us to beautify that space. But there's only so much I can control on that. So, yeah. Sure. yeah. Except for the fact that the park board is not on that property. Public works department. Correct. Yeah. Just to re just to uh, repeat what um, she just said, the public works department owns that property. You're correct, I believe. Yes. Um, so, I've been emailing with Hillary about that a lot, and she's trying to help get these uh, groups all talking together because some of the group, it would, the public works might have to release the property to like the parks board, who would then take up the project of doing the trolley line expansion. So it's a little complicated, but yeah. for all intents and purposes, the trolley line expansion would be a completely separate project from anything we do on our, our property. Um, but it is something that to the best of our ability, we're trying to coincide to happen at like, roughly the same yeah. time. So can again, for those I'm, people on the- Yeah, sorry. so if, uh, if you are gonna speak, if we could, have you come up here? I know it's kind of awkward to ask your question or comment because folks online are saying they really can't hear. Um, so even if like you just want to come stand here or anywhere close, a little like within six feet of it, it should be able to pick it up. Yeah. Okay. There's another question. Go yeah. ahead. No, I like that. Do I need to say it here? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So um, just to uh, clarify, um, that piece of property next to the development is part of the, th the South the Park Board Southwest Master Plan for Parks. It's already a potential park. So that's to be clear. And they're very um, adamant about maintaining that property and moving forward. But because the pocket, the trolley path park goes all the way through the neighborhood. And I, uh, from what I hear is from the staff there, is they want to develop the property there and they've already gone through a community process and it's already been adopted by the community and the city. And so that's already set. And so um, I do not believe that their inclination is to have um, individual property owners develop each individual lot next to their properties. Sure. And so that went through about three, four years ago, it went through a whole community thing and it was adopted uh, by the park board. So that property is now controlled by them. So if they want to donate or that type of thing, but in the end, the feeling is, and even for the community when the maps were made was that the park board was a better partner than the individual property owners to develop the, the, the length of the property. So, um, and actually, parts of the property that have exist on the other side of the turnaround, um, certain owners have um, built up to the property lines with cement patios, things like that, and um, not left setbacks, and et cetera. So that has already started to happen in the business district. And so this is now the residential district. So you'll be hearing from, I think, Adam um, Arvidsson, who's senior planner, I think he's gonna make a comment and or he already has um, to the planning commission um, about what their policy is. And the board of the park board might also weigh in on what their policy is on variances that people will start to look sure. for um, because pretty much every uh, owner that wants to develop is coming for variances on, on that property. So Good. that's what they want to let you Thank know. you, that helped a lot. <laughs> Go ahead. My concern about that property is that yeah. on your drawings, this is previous drawings, I don't yeah. know about the current one. Mm -hmm. um, your preliminary. You need to go. Okay. <laughs> okay. You can also stand right here if you want. You, can, okay. if you don't want to go over there. Just It'll be fine right here. Yeah. Okay. And just so she can hear you too. Yeah. Um, my concern about, about it is that, of course, now I lost my train of thought. Um, I think you were going to ask about the variances in the no the the limit of disturbance. Gotcha. Your lines of limit of disturbance go okay. beyond your property line and into the into that. To me, that tells me you're going to clear cut all of those trees. Let me try to find that. So we we are the single now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of the permitting tree guy. 
Uh, so as Chad said, the limit of disturbance thing you saw in the plans that you took photos of when I came by is actually a civil engineering term regarding erosion control and stuff. So that's not, that's literally just talking about disturbance of soil, not that we're gonna just fly everything over. And so that's what that line is indicating is just disturb soil so that they know how much erosion control we have to do. Okay. Regarding the trees on that slope, I can, I'm sensing that that's obviously a touchy issue. We cannot take trunks that are off of our property unless some of those trees are hanging at a 45 degree angle in which if they cross the plane of the property line, that's considered a, a nuisance tree to our lot and thereby through the city code can be removed even though the trunk is on the other side, but a vast majority, like well over 50% of the tree has to be like in this nuisance plane. But if it's just a branch as with any other neighbor, they are allowed to trim that branch at the property line. So as long as it's not risk the health of the tree, unless it's all considered like a giant. So there's code to, to handle this. We're more than happy to work with the city arborist or any type of person that would help us choose the right trees to take and the right trees to keep. But I think moreover, the whole goal with that area is to make it as beautiful as possible for our sake and our, our future homeowners sake. So we would be, if we remove a lot of trees, which very well may happen, our goal would be to replace it with big, beautiful trees. So and our whole, we're not, by no means are we gonna be the ones that make the trolley path happen that's been in the works for a long time, per the other gentleman's point. Our only goal there is to kind of help move it along. And if we can do anything to help bring it to the forefront, maybe happen a little sooner, maybe donate some money or help create a nice transition space between the trolley path that's already potentially happening and our property, then we'd like to coordinate with the city to do that. Planting aspens, oaks, all sorts of nice things to replace any trees that we would take out. And to some degree, again, just to, you know, one other big concern I can just jump and cover while I'm up here because I'm the engineer is stormwater. So both stormwater and trees are covered by the city. So we have very stringent rules about tree replacements and about stormwater management that would vastly outweigh any pressures that you could put on us as well. So the, especially the stormwater, the, the math that it's involved to make sure that none of the stormwater would go to damage your homes is extreme. Uh, there's, we have a whole civil engineering team that's very competent and dedicated to making sure that nothing bad is gonna happen with the stormwater. And the watershed on top of that is also going to come in and make sure that we're doing everything that we're supposed to do with stormwater. So, um, you want to just talk briefly about what we're thinking from the stormwater perspective at this point? We're a little early in the civil engineering process still. It's part of the submission for the city, but we're making some changes based on uh, the, the the building changes and your concerns. So I think. Maybe Paul, you're the best person to just talk about. Some yeah, you guys are all probably familiar with rain gardens, and there are various ways to do that. There's surface rain gardens where you make a physical depression and the water is directed there and it can temporarily settle and then go in. There's also underground rain garden type of the same idea. It's just there's grass on top, and I have a bunch of rock and sand underground in kind of like a, a landscaping cloth burrito where I direct the water to that and that it does the exact same thing. It gives it a space to fill and then sink into the ground slowly, straight down, you know, not towards your properties or anything like that. So there's a series of systems that we're entertaining. Uh, we have a limited amount of area that where we aren't are planning to plant more trees or things like this. So we may entertain an underground system for that reason. There's other ways of managing or with like, we, we are, we have considered and continue to consider things like even collecting some of the rainwater for gray water purposes, which the civil engineering that firm that we're working with, Solution Blue, it's one of the few firms in the city that actually has done these types of systems where you could correct, collect the water, put in a tank in the basement or something and use it to flush toilets, for example. So there's a wide variety of systems that we're entertaining, but none of them would cause any issues for the surrounding neighbors. I can respond to that. Sure. sure. Yes. Uh, part, part of uh, Sharon's concerns is, you know, recent developments in the last two or three years in our neighborhood on Abbott, on, on uh, going blocks, 
it seems like the developer went ahead and just did whatever they felt like doing in terms of water related issues. And then we all had to deal with this constant running water into the into the sidewalks and under the streets. And then it wasn't until later that the city acted. Okay. You know, so it's coming from you know experience that we all had and you know kind of the rules being ignored. And so uh, I, I think I could speak to that a little bit. I mean, sure. I've I've noticed personally just building other houses and buildings in Minneapolis that they have been much more stringent on those requirements within the last year and a half to two years, probably because of those experiences that you yeah. unfortunately had. Yeah, and um, the watershed work that they've done to really bring the watersheds to the table during the permitting process mm -hmm. is pretty new. I would think that, that yeah. my tenure here has only been about five years in the neighborhood with Sustainable Nine, but I've seen the amount that I do a lot of the permitting at Sustainable Land. The amount that I have to communicate with the watershed and the, the level of requirements that the watershed are starting to bring to the table have only gone up. Yeah. And so that's all. I think related it's a to direct water. response to what you've experienced. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. I mean, that's good. And like the inspectors for, are caring about that a lot more. In the final we have a project, not just one more point. And then uh, we have a project not too far from here, still in Linden Hills, where we have a giant rain garden in the front yard. Um, that was required by the city and they literally come out and inspect every inch of that to make sure that it's the right it can hold the right volume of water and it has the right plants in it and that we've you know com, com, uh, put the right base in and, and everything and so and we weren't well into a basement either because of the water yeah and that's been more of the issue is uh, basements yep you know we're you know with nine foot ceilings yep and you know so yeah let me come on that really thing. Yeah, let me comment yeah. on that really quickly. Because yeah. of the topography of this lot, mm -hmm. um, which maybe I can kind of show in an image here. Actually, okay, yeah, lots of questions. Been waiting yeah. a lot of time. Yes, I'm just trying to handle one uh, one, one comment one about topic. The, and you're kind of showing it here, where the the property line on the south abuts the trolley line. And there are about 10 mature trees in there. Mm -hmm. That area has a significant slope to it. Right. And in my mind, if a, if a flat walking path were to be made there, all of those trees would have to be removed. Um, yeah, I can handle the tree. Yeah. So I, I'm a very big tree hugger guy, I can assure you. And if you can just look at the sandals for my credentials, but uh, <laughs> you know I've, I've lived on farms. I've planted tens of thousands of trees with with friends for various reasons. And when we, a lot of these trees are weed trees, in my opinion, uh, that are just things that grew up. They weren't intended to grow there. They're not healthy. They're growing at odd angles. I understand the desire to save trees. Trust me, we we do that all the time. But we're usually we're trying to save like beautiful oak trees that are like just incredibly healthy and doing what they want to do, but or specifically good trees. So in this case, a lot of the trees on this hill, in, in just my non-professional opinion, are things that are not as beautiful as it could be. And so our intention on anything we remove would be to replace them with trees that are healthy, straight, and are good varieties to be in that spot where they're not going to you know go one way or the other so i think in the renderings you kind of get a vibe of what that ends up looking like and yes we are planning this is kind of a giant divot the way it is now and a lot of other lots have retaining walls for that reason along that same area and so our plan basically fills it in level and that's why Chad was alluding to the basement comment is that that there's not tr a true basement scenario going on because we are lifting the grade between that parking lot and our structure to be not totally level because of where our property line starts, but more level that will eliminate some of the trees. And if the city decides to do the trolley line there, they will likely take out the other half of the trees, but I would imagine that they would put some back. Um, so. Again, I mean, if you look at the other part of the trolley line that exists today, they had to remove a lot of trees, but they've inserted a lot of native plants in the understory. Uh, I've, 
uh, myself to go to the Old Linden Hills to grab some lunch or something, uh, or just to take a break. And I've seen it change a lot over the years and a lot of trees come out, but a lot of beautiful natives go in. Uh, and some neighbor actually dropped off a native planting book at our office to, to encourage us to plant more native flower species, which need a certain amount of light in order to work. So, I mean, I think there's a balance between new beautification and saving of the old trees in, in conclusion that we would definitely be trying to strike. Just to be clear, the neighborhood, the, the green committee is actually the one that, that goes and does all the native plantings. And so we'd like yeah. to... I'm sure they would keep involved with yeah. Shout yeah. out to them. They're yeah, awesome. they've already been in yeah. touch with us. Yeah. And they they're they talk so you yeah. go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, there's a question I think online. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. And so, um, Anne, if you'd like to unmute, you can. Ask yeah, I, I did unmute. Um, I just want to say <laughs> a couple things. That one is that removing mature trees is not eco friendly. And that as a person who works on the trolley path, we work with forestry and not all trees are expected to be straight and tall and perfect. There are valuable trees in this area where this property is going to be uh, potentially built and they are on the trolley line right of way. Never would someone say, oh, it's not perfectly straight. We're going to take it out. Um, I. I was over there with another person I work with and we did identify some trees that are not all scrap trees. So the whole idea of taking all these trees down because it benefits this project is pretty upsetting to me. And I did have a question about the elevation, which you now have answered because if you fill the grade here with five feet and I believe the trolley path right of way property is actually at the bottom of that hill, not at the top. So you would actually be filling in property that doesn't even, trolley path property that doesn't even belong with the house you purchased. So I just kind of don't understand what you're trying to tell people because generally on the trolley path, which I've worked on for almost a decade, um, we don't just go in and clear cut trees we select the trees that need to come out and we encourage the trees that are good trees to grow. So nobody and would, would just and take I don't mean to inter out. interrupt you, but that's exactly, I think what Paul was trying to say is there are gonna be some trees that will be removed, but the ones that are the- No, the they, you, you said you would be removing them because you're filling. And he said the city would probably remove the rest to have straight, nice trees. That's not how the trolley path looks. It's, you know, it's a wild kind of place. I and that's what one of the things that makes the neighborhood appreciate it. I, I appreciate it, Anne, but I think what's difficult here is that unless we were to all to walk out there and look at every individual tree together and agree that this tree is worth saving and this tree is a weed tree and so on and so forth. What I'm trying to, what we're trying to say there is that if there's are there's valuable trees on our property that uh, we have no reason to remove, we're not going to remove them. Um, and and the property, the major, the majority of the trees, what I was trying to explain before, are on the city property. So we're not touching those trees on city property. But you um, want to fill up to the to the parking that's where I think there's a, if, if this is where it gets complex in terms of trying to explain a civil engineer's document between the word fill is a misnomer, I guess. And, and so there will be a, how do I put it guys, like a depression or a swale or um, we're not filling in the city property. We're not filling to the bottom of these trees. What we're doing is essentially bringing up the majority of the grade up towards our property line, but then there'll be a depression that happens as we enter that hill. And so if you look at the contours, um, I'm sure. and as a matter of fact, well, right? When you look at your drawing, it looks flat. Yes. Yeah. You cannot modify the grade of the city property. Correct. You would only I'm be sorry. working within the bounds of your property. Correct, yep. So well, right now, right. 
we're not we're not proposing to alter the grade on the city property and all, all we're doing right now is there is a this is the current um it's a little hard to see i don't know i guess you can see it so better your, up cons there. You can see your right conceptual here your conceptual oh, renderings are inaccurate then no. yeah they are those renderings are really just to try to help you visualize it they're by no means perfect so yeah. Yeah. especially when it comes to grading i mean you can think of the renderings as more of an idealized version of what the project could be but it's not this is a this is a problem we have all the time with any project or any client is that you know obviously with today's technology you want to see what it looks like but it's very difficult to get it totally perfect especially when it comes to the landscape which is what we're, we're not the rendering is not meant to rec represent the landscape yeah. uh, unfortunately it's just meant to give a, an idea of what the landscape around it could look like and right. you know we're not landscape architects or civil engineers when it comes to that so but the architects do do a great job of giving you an idea of what the building looks like which is so important. i have one other question then i think i probably used up my time so you have <clears throat> many beautiful trees at the rear of the building that are mature trees that are probably 70 or years older or 70 years old or older. And um, I'm definitely hoping that you're not removing the white pine or white pines or the other valuable trees in the back. Could you please confirm that you're not doing that? Because I think you just said you weren't planning to remove um, you you can't replace them with other trees it would take 70 for every tree you'd have to have 70 years to catch up for the good work they're doing and being eco-friendly and carbon capture capture and our um urban forest what we're forgetting a little bit here is though it there is a point in the, the tree's life where it does meet its natural end a tree is a renewable resource right and so if we have to remove a tree because it's right where the building is we have to remove it and so if that's the case then we're planning on replanting new trees in its place that are um you know more what's the word um what's that hardy well hardy but more uh a variable uh different species than potentially that were there previously but to give a variety like for instance we wouldn't plant a whole bunch of elm trees um, that potentially would be susceptible to dutch elm disease and so we would plant based on the arborists and the the the, the um the civil engineer and the, the landscape engineers uh recommendations we'd plant trees that were um that we believe would last outlast this building okay um, um I'm sorry, but you know, you can look up how the life of a tree just for information's sake. And like the white pines live, can they live 200 years? They live well over a hundred and that those trees are nowhere near that age. I'm just saying you might want to look that up. Just say to wrap up the tree conversation, like we we try to respect trees whenever we can. Our tree is gonna come out when we, any new building at some point goes on this lot, yes. We will do our best, I guess, is the only real assurance I can give you. We don't have a tree survey for this lot yet. It's still really early in the development process. I know this looks like the plans are really big. These are very, very conceptual plans for our level of we what could we not, do. Yeah, we could not so, build from these plans. Let's put it that way. Chad has tried to illustrate how this is still really early. Things are still, although it looks really big, things are still very flexible. Our overall goal is to try and plant, uh, the city will require a certain amount of tree replacement no matter what. So everyone can rest assured on that. Uh, and I, I, I guess like all I can tell you is that we'll do our best when it comes to the trees. There, there's definitely gonna be some removal. We will try to do our best to replace it and make it as, as appropriate as possible. Um, I just, I'm just wanted to come in here, but um, hearing that there's seven foot setbacks all around it, you're building right up to that seven foot setback. Well, and in the previous version that I was just showing was the version we showed a week ago. I was going to start to get into the changes that we've oh, made. Okay. So, well, but go but, ahead. Okay, but yeah. just going with that for a minute. Um, I don't see how any of the trees will live if, if, if you're adding fill on top, multiple feet of fill. 
on top of root systems that are think that the ground level's down here and all of a sudden it's up here. And the fact that you're cutting, I think what I mean, I don't mean to interrupt you, but essentially here's the seven foot setback. So uh -huh. the building is here. Mm -hmm. This distance from the property line to here, I don't know off the top of my head. Does anybody happen to know what this distance is? It's considerable, right? Mm -hmm. And so the trees are here, right? And so our building gets closest and meets that seven foot setback only here. The setback back here are considerably greater, even on for that triangle. Sure. sure. Okay. This, but this is at least 70%, if not more, of the, the lot length. So it goes back to your comment about short of actually all of us going on a field trip and looking at every tree. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, but, I think what we're but you're going to be filling that. To, but, but you're going to be filling that as well, right? But if you look at the way the contours work here, so uh -huh. these are two foot contour lines, and so whenever a contour line is really close together, that means that the hill is more steep, steeper, right? Mm -hmm. And so there is a steep grade change from the parking lot right now to where our property line starts, which is this dark line here, okay? Um, and basically, if you look at this, there's the hill gradually starts here, and then it actually doesn't really get steep until right back here. But you'll be filling it in. Anywhere I We're see not green, filling, filling completely in. all the way in. And that's the, that's the difficult part to look at in a conceptual drawing here, because okay. it's not 100% complete yet. We haven't got to that stage with the civil engineer, but what we're trying to do is is twofold so we're trying not to dig a basement that's eight to nine to ten feet deep what we're actually doing is only digging about approximately four feet down into the ground because of the what i was trying to you're trading four or five feet of elevation by filling in there. well because of how the property is basically a giant bowl right now shoot sorry i'm trying to find an image that would this image i think is the best one i have but basically, this is a giant bowl where it, it's, you can tell on the sidewalk there, well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stand in front of it. Um, the sidewalk essentially slopes like this until it gets to a, a little bit more of a level path. So yes, in some cases, what we're trying to do is bring the elevation up here, specifically though, so that we're not um, getting down into the water table and causing additional issues in terms of like some pumps running all the time and all of that. And so if we're, we're trying to balance two different issues here. One would be bringing the grade up so that we don't have that issue happen. And then now we're like, I, I forget it was you, I think that said that basically there's other developers that just dig a giant basement and then they end up with yeah, that was our house that you talked about. That no, we didn't. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's okay. It was just back home. We didn't know about the problems until after we Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, yeah. we're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess just to the comment on that really quickly, like we developed a different property over in Linden Hills recently, and we decided not to put a basement in because the water table was too high. And so that, I guess what I'm trying to say is we have to balance multiple issues here. And so it's not just about necessarily the trees, it's sometimes about the water mitigation. Right. And my my comment is just about the tree stuff. And my okay. concern, and I th and I think you're addressed, you're you're speaking to it at least we'll see when it actually happens. But sure. My concern is when I hear that you're you're adding fill. I know from previous house we lived in a long time ago, we we did that. Yeah. We were warned that we'll lose trees over time and we did. So I, I just have concerns when I hear about large, healthy, desirable trees. That... You're 100 right. If we if you pile soil on roots, it, it can kill a tree. And I guess all again, uh, short of the field trip, again, and we don't even have the tree survey, so we can't represent it on the plans yet. Right. The city will require us to do a tree survey. The city will review every tree that we want. We have to propose what we're going to take. They will review that. They will either approve or deny that, the, every single individual tree. We will either be, then if we take a lot of trees, we will be required to replace a certain amount of inches on the lot. Right. We would want to do that anyways. So, I, and I, I just want to make more space for if there's other things besides trees. No, I, that's why I just want to make that comment. Issue and very well heard on that. Um, and we will do our best and just know that the city is going to require us to do a lot of replacement if we do a lot of pre cutting. Yeah, I guess it's a premature conversation and hearing that you're going to do your best. I believe that everyone's well intended yeah. with it, but sometimes the best isn't good enough. Yeah, but I, I guess know until I you actually get into it more. 
Yeah, is, I guess I would ask the community this way is like, is, is it the fact that trees would be removed or is the fear that they would not be replaced or is replacement seen as almost not worth anything? It's that you want the trees that are already there to just stay. Well, I think that was ask and answer. Ask us in 70 years if you'd like to replace us. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so I, I think this point about the trees, and I'll just, I won't, but I'm not really concerned about the water. I don't want to mess development make the water. Uh, people are concerned that you're going to pull a 70 year old tree and plant a tree, and then we've lost the 70 year old tree. Sure. End of story. Yep. On the water, I'd like you to put in writing that not one drop of water will move north from your property that isn't already moving now. Yeah. I so, don't care what you do about it. Yeah. Because we had a McMansion build, and speaking of sumps running, we never ran our sump until the build of McMansion. They raised the grade because they don't want a water problem in their building, and they passed it on to us. So let me address and that right now, McMansion. without any other I don't questions. Get you address. I just want to put writing that no well, water okay, let me that address doesn't it move for... north now will not move north when you're done. Okay. That's all I want. So we've owned this property for a long time, um, okay. about seven years, I think, six or seven years. Not a long March time, but 17. Much, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, my point being is that while my parents lived in the house that is there currently, they experienced the water that rushes down that driveway and into their the, the old crappy garage that's there now, right? Not to mention the water that would fill into the low spots of their, their property. Um, what we are doing will only improve on that, con that current condition, right? And so what I mean by that is everything we've all already discussed with stormwater management, we're not going to be allowed to just all of a sudden dump a lot of new water from the roof or anywhere else to those spaces that previously were horrific, like torrential rain collectors. Um, and so I think if you were to, to walk the lot currently, you would see just how steep that grade is from front to back and how much water currently ends up back there. And so the current roof plans and the gutter plans are to direct the vast majority, I can't speak to the volume specifically, but the vast majority of the water to the south and east, which on this plan here is the, oops, sorry, on this site plan here is this is the south and this is the east. And those are our opportunities for the most areas of rain gardens and other water filtration methods. There will most likely be additional rain gardens or some type of water, stormwater management along all sides. But my point being is that when we're dumping gutters or water from anywhere else that's not a green roof, it's going to end up, the vast majority will end up on the east and south side. So again, those civil engineering plans aren't 100% complete yet, so it's impossible for me to know exactly the amount, but anyway, um, what we're trying not to do is dump it to the west or north. So, yes, John. Um, I'm John Lambert. I live, we share the driveway. Right here. Um, and my ass, I guess similar to what was said here. I, 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 I live over in Abbott. Next to a McMansion, it was supposed to get French okay. drain, but the developer looked me in the eye and said French drain. Okay. And if we had time for a field trip, we could go see what a French drain. I, you know, so my so what I'm going to ask Chad is, yeah. I want I can hear you say about a great plan. I want to see the engineering, yeah, and the plan, and stand in the driveway with you guys and explain it to yeah. us. That's okay. Totally so I mean, that's got to happen soon. Yeah, well, we we don't have the documents yet okay. to do that, right? And so I think we have preliminary ones, but they're by no means final okay. to the point where we could okay. have that conversation. Yeah. So I'm happy so to do what we have. We will do that. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, I I, I want to step back for just a second because because I, I think I'm I'm a little frustrated too because I'm a Linden Hill resident. We've been building in this in this neighborhood for a really long time, and. I know you guys don't know me from Adam unless you've been in any one of our projects before and I've met you that way, um, but we care about this community. And so we're, we're a responsible developer enough where I'm, I personally would feel awful if I left you holding the bag with uh, your experience with the McMansion down your street, right? I mean, that's, we want to continue building and want to remain good neighbors. Our office is right over here. You can come in and say hello anytime. This is not, I'm not like some out of, 
uh, uh, met out metro builder that's going to come in here and you know just do what they will and and not care about the neighborhood i think we've been pretty responsible neighbors the entire time we've been building okay. here and so, so that's my I personal just... insurance i know that maybe that doesn't go that far but you can uh, so um a lot of people have questions i have, i'm sure more than we're going to get to in sure this, but i'm going to ask you to do one thing can you put the perspective rendering from the southeast the 45 degree rendering you had just uh, hang on from the southeast yes yeah the and first... i spoke to this are you talking about this one no you just skip it. No, keep going well okay right here well there was 45 degree, uh... that first, sorry, oh the, the one i had okay sorry yeah there. yes I know that what I'm about to say is probably considered irrelevant by zoning people. <clears throat> I talked at City Hall about scale. Mm -hmm. How can anyone think? This is a 2,500 square foot house. And I understand how perspective works. So I understand this is going to appear bigger. But to me, this is just uh, inconceivable that something like that can be built next to it. And I know that's our individual property and that's me complaining, but this is just mind-boggling. And you guys are gonna build it and sell it and that's your business, but a lot of unhappy people. Yeah, I okay. yeah. It makes the character of the neighborhood seem rather Okay. I, I think I think there you know there's definitely and we're hearing from one side of the argument which you're all entitled to your opinion on that and you especially John and and um, but we've we heard the same exact concerns voiced really loudly when we were building this three unit building right here people would walk by and they were like oh my gosh I can't believe that's one giant McMansion house right and so without very much information they were making a judgment based on what we were putting up. And then when it was all finished, they realized, oh wait, that's three units. They're all two, two and a half stories tall. Um, but yet the scale of them, in my personal opinion, fits in pretty well with the neighborhood. And it was an extremely well-received final product by the vast majority of the people in this neighborhood. And so- We're addressing this- uh, I know, I'm just- I'm just stating that I've heard this same concern before, and I, I'm hearing it again, but anyway, but Can I we'll let someone, someone else speak. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to eventually get to the changes that we made, because I think this will answer a lot of the questions that everybody's about to start asking. So it was, Excellent. I just want to hang on what John said, and yeah. I, I want to hang on what John said. Um, and uh, your comment, Chad, I'm really glad to hear that you care about being a neighbor and that you live in Linden Hills. Um, this is supposedly the back of it, which is not the case. I would be way lower for my house. Um, it's been really, really concerning and offensive that there have been zero back renderings. We're about um, to show some. Of any. Yeah. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. Um, but the, the 360 that you did at city planning showed it in a meadow. And most of you have been in my backyard at this point, but uh, this this is the reality of my backyard. And this is the fence that they're talking about building. The the wall, any way you cut it, is going to go higher than this picture is in the entirety the of my property line. Mm -hmm. um, there's just, a, supposedly there's going to be an elevator and there are mechanicals, hopefully not. Um, I have all the, my entire house is back windows. So it's my kitchen, my living room, my master bedroom. That is going to be looking at a 50 foot wall. Um, and I just can't say enough. My house is my everything. I'm a single mom. I've lived there for 17 years. It's my only asset. I've had a realtor guesstimate it will lower my property value at least 15%. Um, so this does feel like my life is under siege, and um, it's been really concerning and offensive that I did not hear a word about this until seven days before the 19th. There's been no attempt to communicate 
even then the date was October 20th. I am tall in the meeting on the 19th. You told me no. I sent you an email about how I was mistaken and I apologize. On Thursday. I gave you the correct date. I literally didn't know the correct date to call. It's just been really, really I I understand now. I didn't know that apparently 2040 allows for this. I it, I find it absolutely, it has to be an oversight that they have all these requirements for the front of the building and none for the back because this is my yard right now, but this could be anybody's yard. Um, I have a lot of, there's, I think you guys even got over 300 emails from concerned people around, notable people around Minneapolis that are watching this project. We got about mm -hmm. 12 emails. I wouldn't say we got 300. Well, yeah. I have a hundred, a hundred that were actually copied to me. We were saying about 12. Oh, to you. Yes. There, I believe there's a, oh, Hillary got over 300 from across Minneapolis of people watching this project. Because even if this is allowed by 2040, I would ask, this doesn't feel ethical. This doesn't feel responsible. This will absolutely devastate me. This is, I believe, anyone's worst interpretation of 2040. So as forerunner 2040 developers trying to be neighborly and ethical and responsible, I would... I, I'm very hopeful for these revisions um, because this will devastate me. I, again, I think it's just, I'm not trying to show this. We, we put this together. I think it's just trying to take a second to open on my computer here. Great. That is the internet. No. <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, why don't you ask your question? Okay, I try and I get this a, open. A brief comment here. I think that helps to explain some of the problems with trust. Um, uh, my spouse and I, John, live at uh, four three four eight, just to the north. Of the property that we're talking about. We've been there for eight years. During four of those years, Brent and Janelle Hansen, Chad and Ryan's parents, were our next door neighbors. Uh, Janelle is a sustainable line partner, and they let us know that something new was going to be built by a sustainable line on this property, and we were assured that we would be informed of the plans in a timely fashion. In early September, we, we received the notice from the city regarding the public hearing on September 19th. When I received that, I went online to see uh, what the process was for requesting a zoning variance in Linden Hills. And I was relieved to see that um, as an adjacent neighbor, I would be contacted by the developer uh, to sign this form indicating my understanding of their proposal and the date it would be discussed by the Linden Hills Zoning Committee. That never happened. In talking with some of my other four adjacent property owners, I became aware that some of them had been approached by Paul True uh, to sign the second page of this form. Uh, the first page wasn't shared with them. So my neighbors signed something without knowing what they were signing. I am asking that in an effort to prevent this from happening again, that the zoning committee simply follow the process that's so clearly outlined on your website. Mm -hmm. And please do not schedule a meeting regarding a zoning variance until you have this form with all of the adjacent neighbor's signatures on it in your hands. Mm -hmm. And please eliminate this from the website, because at least in this case, it was used deceptively. I, I, I think I'll I'd give like Joan an opportunity to speak. A comment about that. That is a, a completely uh, non-mandatory item and form that was shared with me the day that I came to you. We received that form from the Linden Hills Council, and they asked me, our company, if we would please go that day, go knock on the neighbor's doors that are adjacent, before the meeting that night. I made an extreme effort to then whip together a letter in case any of you weren't home. I, I put those in envelopes with our address on it. And I went that night to go spend my evening into the 6.30 to go to people's homes and to have that conversation. I spent two hours 
putting letters in and, and using a non-mandatory form that is suggested by the council uh, to, to make sure that at least some of you were aware before that meeting that night. I think that's so, the thing. Yeah, that, let me just be clear, that process is entirely that we uh, as a council, uh, actually coming out of uh, Walter Pitt's era uh, on the council. That's me. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that, that guy. Um, to, to communicate with the neighbors. It is by no means required. And the second part is that we uh, don't, didn't, don't get the, we get the notifications the same as all of you that are adjacent property owners in terms of um, a letter uh, or an email communication. So there's I no- think, I think so the other piece- to yeah. pay us in the box, you're saying, you know- No, I, I'm not, just, not at all. I, I, you know, none, of, none of this at all is normal to a developer's process. The, the well, letter is not required. Site information very easily. And if they're not going to follow it, then just please remove it. I was waiting for that We had at one point, we had a lot of difficulty in Linden Hill um, in terms of development, in terms of notification. So that form actually predated when I was going to chair. Um, which Bjorn is now, that predated, part of that predated us um, on the zoning committee. But we found that when we had that form and we had them uh, go to the adjacent neighbors and just get them to sign off, that eliminated a lot of these problems that are coming up because it was something. Now, the city always says, well, there's a minimum legal standard and it's not the minimum legal standard but when it's a benefit to the community and it, it, it saves save a lot of time, a lot of heartache, and a lot of problems for the adjacent landowner. And so that's why it came in and it was used for a long time. And we eliminated a lot of these problems by using that form. So it's a little problematic too when you go in front of like the planning commission and you hear them say, well, it's not legal or it's not part of the process or whatever. In Linden Hill, we're under pressure. And so when you're in a community that's under pressure, sometimes having these advantages of communication, getting the, just what you're doing now, Chad, is like yep. getting the neighbor and uh, that are adjacent and a developer together like right away, eliminating all the problems. So yep. when there's resistance to this kind of notification or saying these things, it's a little bit short-sighted because it yep. really did help. It really did lower the pressure and and the Linden Hills Neighborhood Council did it, and they still do. So it's just a matter of going but, forward. I just want to say we were helped. trying to it do helped. the right thing. Yeah, we just so we we were trying, and I think we didn't quite understand the process perfectly because yeah. a variance was involved, and we haven't even got to that part of the discussion. But ninety nine percent of the projects we've turned in to Linden Hills haven't required a variance before, and so in that other process, the notification. Um, process, I guess, is is different. Um, and so this was, you know, um, no fault of the Linden Hills Neighborhood Council. I want to be very clear on that. It's just that we got that, we found out the day, the, the minute we found out, Paul literally Mark walked out the door and started notifying neighbors because we didn't know that that was required and, at that time, but it wasn't even required. I shouldn't say that. It was well, and for example, effectively it worked, right? Because yes, there was a short timeline. Everyone was notified. The planning commission said, "Let's do it. Let's let's meet again in the end of October so that we can have this meeting because the timeline was so short." Just barely. Right, right. It, the process didn't work perfectly, but it yeah. did actually work because we're sitting down to have this meeting right now to talk about these issues, and you've all brought them. And so, yeah. while it wasn't a perfect example of a process, we are still here. Yeah. talking about the issues and working through them. And I want I want to be very clear here that as when we're developing these plans, we have to go through a lot of iterations internally before we even get to a point where we think we have something that the city will even look at and and begin to consider approval, right? And so uh, even though I think Paul used the term, these look like baked plans that have been um, out there for a really long time. They literally were finished within a day or two of us sending out the notification to the, the proper notification we were required to do. And so there wasn't an opportunity prior to that to even have this discussion because we wouldn't have had anything to share with you. And so 
except the preliminaries that went to the city in Jan in July. I'm I'm not sure what you mean by the pre preliminaries, but I'd have to well, go back you, and look. You um, so in this in this okay. In the, in the staff you, you're actually you're you're proving my point exactly right. And so we have to submit stuff to the city, right? And then they come back. They have a long period to review it, and they say, okay, you don't meet these ten things. You have to make all these modifications, which happened in this case, and it happens in the majority of cases where we submit a plan, and then the city staff has to say, okay. You're you're too wide, you're too tall, whatever the situation is. And, and so my point is, is that if we would have show do that, it wouldn't have been any more remotely mm -hmm. the same of what we're showing you now, because there's been so many iteration changes before we're even ready to share it with the neighborhood, is and my point. Is so we we have to get through a whole series of check boxes with the city before we can actually meet understand. with you. Otherwise, it would just be a pointless that, exercise. In, in August was when the second when you submitted the second one yeah, but that we don't hear that same day you have to understand we it takes sometimes weeks before we hear back from a city planner on what the actual their opinion is yeah. they have they have several they have by right they have 10 days to review it oftentimes it goes past that time before we even get the feedback and so we're left waiting trying to yes. and then we have to react quickly the second they give us that feedback and so it isn't a perfect process, and I, I don't think we're going to solve that here tonight. We've learned a lot just from the process, but it was by no means our intent to deceive anyone or not notify neighbors in time. In fact, when we found out, as Paul said, I was like, you got to get out and because we didn't, this was a, yeah. a voluntary yeah. thing yeah. that we yeah. did, and we yeah. and Paul graciously decided to spend his afternoon and evening running around and talking that, to as many people as possible. That was shocking to most of the neighbors. Yeah, I get and that. We were stunned. We had no clue that this was even happening. And, and the, that I guess, was, that I, that I, don't know if it, I don't know if it would make a difference if we showed you like just a square box or a, a 3D rendering, you probably still say those things, right? Because at, at some point we have to put something on paper to show you is my point, okay. right? And so we finally got to the point where we felt like, okay, the city is saying that this will work. So now it's time to meet with the neighbors and get solicit their feedback. And the, our first order of business is to notify you and then voluntarily notify you and then meet with this council. And then there's still a whole bunch of meetings that are st still haven't happened yet that, I'm sorry, Ben. Oh, that's think? okay. I, I mean, from, from everyone, I think from zoning and housing uh, and, and what I'm hearing from chat is, the intent was not to shock or scare or hurt or harm anyone. And the timeline Basically. was compressed in a way that no one was comfortable. And and that's again why the conversation was tabled so that we could have more time, so that we could have more conversation and work through it. I think um, everyone's been in that in that purpose of transparency. I think the the hard part here is we're navigating something that's um uh, voluntary for them to even be here tonight, right? This is Chad and Sustainable Nine taking their time uh, to have this meeting. Uh, frankly, it's you guys taking your time to, to be yeah, here to have I know you work till seriously. Six, they could, they could, <laughs> they could apply and just do this thing without you seeing their time. There are many steps okay, that you were, they're coming to the table to have the conversation, and and a lot of the things that that are are possible or what they could do or a variance free project, they wouldn't show up until the day they were coming with a backup. Right? Yeah. I think we so need to keep going. I agree. I, I would like to I would like to move on to the actual plans for a second because we're going to be here until midnight. Yes, I would like to see your modification. Thank you. I would too. <laughs> um, so. Again, I'm going to try and go through this relatively quickly now. I got to bring up my notes so that I don't miss anything. Um, so one of the biggest concerns was reducing the rear setback. I'm going to get to that in a second. But one of the, the only real variance that we were applying for in the initial phase was to have larger patios than what is now shown here in this rendering. And so previously, we showed patios that were 250 square feet. Um, the city suggested remove, reducing those down to 50 square feet. And so that's what you're looking at now. So we've come in compliance. So we will no longer need a variance um, with the city for the front patios. And so um, 
in other words, there is there there. Well, anyway, they're in compliance with the um, with the city guidelines. There, um, what that does affect. Previously, there were some concerns at the public hearing that the previous patio came out to about here. Let's say, if you can see my cursor, um, that some of this space, some I forget which resident raised the issue of some of this space was technically coming into the side yard setback. Mm -hmm. And so that's no longer the case in terms of its impact to the, the trolley path and those that setback there. So that that change was made. Um, we, we moved all the HVAC systems to the south side of the building. They were previously on the rear and uh, the, the west side of the building. They're now on the south side. We're um, on the south side. Southwest. Um, I don't know. I think I have an image of all that. But before I, I'll show you all the images in a second. I just want to read off all the the items that we we did change. Um, we pulled the rear of the building in by two feet. I know some people wanted it twenty feet, um, but unfortunately, two feet is the max we could get without impacting the ability to park in the building and get down that ramp. Um, we pulled the rear retaining wall in. Previously, it was on the rear property line. We pulled that in by two feet as well um, and planted, uh, and we're planning on planting trees and shrubs along the west side of that wall. So I will show that again in the images here in a second. Um, we added plants and vines as a living wall on the west side of the building um, the, the, from the front, from the base of the building to the top in one area. Um, we uh, warmed up the material out, material, I can't say that word, materiality for the neighbors on the west and the north. And so what that means is we just changed the siding types and tried to add some nuance to the siding so that it's not so stark. Um, I don't know if the color has been 100% defined, but. Um, white, as close to white, I'm going to lose all my natural light. So looking at a black wall. Yep. So then we also addressed any drainage issues, the rain gardens and things like that. And so I'm gonna show the images so you can see the colors that we're proposing now. But again, this is the, the purpose of the meeting is to still solicit additional feedback on that. So uh, well, I already mentioned that we're directing as much water to the east and the south as possible. So I'm gonna jump back to the beginning. So that was the first image showing the patio changes is really the majority of what you can see here. So this is the southwest corner. So this is showing new trees being planted here, um, the native species being planted here, and this is the row of currently proposed arborvitaes that would be that would be installed. Um, the reason those are being chosen is just because those are more of a permanent. They don't shed their leaves in the, the winter time, and so that acts as a dice buffer. This is about the height that they would be at the time of planting, approximately. You can barely see, but behind there, there's a retaining wall along that side. Um, and so now the rear setback was previously seven feet at this, this bump out here where the staircase is. That is now nine feet. And this area here where this bump out is now 11 feet. So, so that retaining wall, again, has been pushed back two feet into the property. And so these trees are still on our property, but they're in front of the or behind um, your fence there. This is the living wall that I was talking about and we've added this wood element here as well. And so again, this is just in a, in a little over a week's time, we've tried to put as much into this as we could think of. The other, oh, I, I almost forgot one thing. We're, uh, one of the concerns was about light from the stair tower and that this wouldn't always just shine light. And so we have, our intent is, we're looking at a few different products right now where, um, uh, it's essentially a motion activated light. So this would always be dark unless someone is traveling in the staircase. Um, and then it only remains on for, a, I think it's about 60 seconds or so. Um, so this is the elevator bay here of the, where the living wall is. So is, is there a staircase to access the parking? Or is that how yes. it would be yeah. in the It's required by code that we have both a, um, a rear staircase. We have to have a staircase so many feet with, you have to have a, a internal staircase that gets down to the exit as well as this, this common staircase. So this is a common staircase between the, the 
the unit fire more code. for fire code reasons. Yeah. So, so it's now really inside the living space. No. That Correct. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So the only time someone would be using this is, let's say, uh, they're coming in from the garage and they don't want to use the elevator with they, they have their exercise fanatics and they want to run up the stairs to their unit or something and rather than taking the elevator. Um, I don't know how often these would be used. It's obviously up to the owners that live there, but the vast majority of people are going to be using the elevator. So, um, yeah. and then there's staircase, there's a staircase within each of the individual units as well, but those are in the front of the building. And those don't go to the garage, is that correct? They are only internal to the unit. Okay, yeah. so the ones are internal, yeah. the back is shared. Yeah. The back one's shared. Yeah. And so that's again a, a fire code. Um, issue that so we're you know there was a comment about trying to move the staircase and the elevator to the side but we would have basically lost the ability to uh, provide the the, the uh, underground parking the way it's currently designed it would have completely blown up the entire floor plan that we couldn't figure out a way to make it work um, by doing that um, I, I do have a few more images here um, can the staircase be does it need to have windows we, we did discuss that. Um, so the city of Minneapolis does require a certain amount of glazing on each side of the building. And so that's something that we, we did discuss as a team. Do we need to have the windows there um, or do they need to be as large? These, those are questions that honestly we'll have to pursue with the city to see what they would allow and not allow. Skylight on the roof. Skylight on the roof. Yep, that's a good suggestion. Are you seeing, is the intent that there should be less glass on the stairway? Well, I'm just, from a light perspective, the light coming into her back here. Yeah. yeah. And, and then now that you describe the function, it's like, well, why are the windows set? Yeah. We, we talked about uh, automated shades, Sharon. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We also talked about that. So at the end of the day, you know, you can buy shades now that are light, uh, sunlight sensitive. So when it hits a certain point of the day, they would just shut automatically. So if there was any, you know, blackout type shade that we would put in there that would be another solution to eliminate any light. But they could also be, this is an idea, uh, I want to be for Stephanie for sure, um, but they could also be glazed. Yeah, frosted, you mean, or yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yep, yep. And, and the concern I have is twofold. One is the light. Yep. And should you have it set up on a sensor, if I'm sitting in my backyard and someone's in there, it's going to go on, click off, click on, drive me nuts. Yeah, I, I mean, again, it's I, it's a balance here. It's like I think it's no different than if you're living next to a neighbor that walks in and turns their light on to grab something out of their dining room, and then they turn the light back off. I, <laughs> I, much bigger scale. Yeah. I understand. And is that the HVAC for the regular? I'm sorry. Yes, this is the HVAC systems. You know, and mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they previously they were here and over here, and so there is no neighbor to the south other than the parking lot and then the commercial districts, of course. But so um, I, I think I, I should comment quickly. I mean, Paul's our resident and en mechanical engineer, so he can speak to this better than I can, but. The air conditioning units that we use are from, um, typically they're the Carrier Infinity Series, which are extremely quiet, whisper quiet units, um, comparable to other units that are out there. They're the, they're the highest end carrier unit you can get. So, okay. um, and it's not one of those commercial like furnaces or uh, mechanical systems that you would typically see on a, on a large commercial rooftop. Okay. So go ahead. This is close to my end of the apartment that I'm going to be seeing looking at that. Well, and I mean, it. honestly, I don't think you will see it because we oh, have sorry. a retaining wall as well as a. No, the retaining wall isn't that high. That's uh, about two and a half feet here. It. It's level. You would not notice the noise any more than your current neighbor. This is a residential. It is the nicest residential. I don't have any, I don't have one, what I hear. Let's let's put it this way. It, well, that, that okay, that's not even yeah, loud. that's not even comparable to what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, that's loud, but that's, that's incredibly loud. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. Here. These are residential um, air conditioning handle 
can it's just like the normal one you would put in your house if you were to put in the, the Cadillac of a system this would this would be it it's not a commercial now, unit. if I find that it is noisy who do I say I need noise abatement there are the city has limits on what is allowable in a residential context I believe but I would have to check into that but the city does also regulate where we're allowed to put the AC units if yeah in hopes of not creating more issues. Um, I guess a question, Chad. Um, what do you do with the existing house and how are you Good question. taking that apart? I would suggest using like Better Futures yep. or something yep. like we that. Work with, we work with Better Futures and because what's the new company? that's mandated from the city. You know, yep. you can put it in the dumpster. And yep, out. we do that in all of our um, infill projects. We work with Better Futures, and there's another company now, and I'm, it's the name is Birch escaping Group. Birch Group. Birch Group. Birch Group. Birch Group. So there's two um, third-party nonprofits that we work with, and what they do is they come in and disassemble the house as much as they can. Um, in terms of, they take all the hardwood floors, uh, the trim, the the windows, sometimes siding. They basically take as much as they think they can repurpose in another building and leave us essentially just with the shell that's good and that's what yeah. i wanted to hear um yeah. i wanted to say as an architect i came down here not liking the project in terms of because it's a fourplex or yeah. four units um so i want to say that i appreciated the fact that you went through the zoning and what's allowed and what you're doing um and and so i think it's appropriate for what it is. However, I can understand all the neighbors uh, concerns about that. I would like to say that I think you've done a good job addressing pretty much most of their concerns uh, as far as in my opinion as an architect and looking at this kind of stuff. Yep. Um, as far as the, the air conditioning units, if they're uh, a sear factor of 17 or higher, I mean, you can't hear them. Right. I can't uh, hear mine. And, yep. I just replaced them last year. So, yeah, um, exactly. So, overall, I would say you know, the neighbor on the north, um, it looks like you're going to have to do some sort of retaining wall to so his driveway doesn't collapse. You put no. an elevation on the north. Yeah, uh, it seems like he's got, he's got, he's got the, or they have the, the bigger fish to fry with you in terms of it impacts them, in my opinion, more. It, it won't alter the the pitch of their driveway at all. So the retaining wall is currently at its highest point. Is no, on the here. other side. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just saying that the highest point here and it slowly tapers down to nothing here. Okay, so it's it's basically zero. Correct. Okay. You, yep. you show the other rendering chart. Show the, the front. On the back. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see how it's tapering there to almost nothing. So we don't yeah, okay. have a north elevation. And, I don't and actually, know if we with do the enough. modern design, it, it lessens the effect of, you know, this monstrosity next to you. So if it was, you know, some of the houses we've seen built around here, you, you know, you can have a 14, 12 roof pitch. And this is, I'm sorry, much, John. Much higher than what they're, they're proposing. And so right. the, the, this modern design actually is, is a better scale I think, of what could be built. Yeah, I guess. That was what, thank you for making that point. I was not making that very well earlier, but he's right that this is essentially a two-story structure and with a with a front gable, I don't know if my cursor disappears into the clouds there, but essentially it would be much higher with a similar roof pitch to the, that we had to the north. This, this just happens to be a one and a half story house next to us here. It, you know, I'm just saying it, but the full two story home with a gable roof on top of it, it would be taller than what we're showing here. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second while I hunt for this document that I'm looking for. So I just don't want to distract everybody while I look for that, but keep asking your questions while I'm. Or if there were, were there any other questions? Yeah, I think I lost the internet or something. Um, one of one drawing, a site plan drawing, shows what is now the current barber shop, and it's labeled as Wooden Ship Brewery. Are there plans to expand Wooden Ship Brewery that we have not been told about yet, that the neighborhood council would know about, or that Sustainable Nine would know about? 
activity. You know what I'm referring to on your site plan? The the edge of the where that barber shop is it oh. says wooden chair. Oh, there's a small. There is a maybe people aren't re, don't realize that there's a there's a one room salon on the back side of Wooden Ship. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. I think it's just a I just a mislabel. Mis mislabel the building. So, no, so the neighborhood council doesn't. No one knows the plans to expand, and we just haven't been told. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If they ever yeah. wanted to expand that wasn't within their right, they would be. You would all be notified through yeah. the good. process. Um, I do have a. Uh, question Thank about the retaining wall. Um, in the drawings that I was looking at, the retaining wall, this may not apply anymore, um, went right through one of the telephone poles that's sitting there uh, that aren't in your drawings, because there's two two telephone poles. Um, I, I if either of you want to comment on that I, while I'm looking for this other document. I, I cannot remember where we left off. Now that it's that far back. Yeah. And then it didn't move. Doesn't change all the way to the interior. Could be around. Okay. I don't know. Well, we're we're starting to again. This is still super early for our phase to deal with those sorts of problems. It's a it's a very real concern. We at the other property just over here, we had to work with the utility, and uh, a pole was kind of adjusted. A new fan pole was placed in. We worked with all the neighbors in that case to make sure that. You know, their services were not interrupted or any, any problems of that nature. And it, the end result really cleaned up kind of what was a messy whole situation for that, those neighbors in that lot. Um, and the new feed to our would be underground. Uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, Paul, but I just want to quickly comment on what's on the screen. Uh, we, we did our best here just to put this little gift together to just try and show um, if developer. another developer, if we would have sold this lot to someone else, this is most likely something along the scale of what they zoom in. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can. Oh, yeah, I guess I can. It's not real. No, that's this is exactly what the the, the four door three zoning would have allowed in terms of the amount of story height and. Uh, you'll notice the void that we created in the center space again to add that parking structure. I'm just saying, with going to be four stories. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying that this is the purpose of showing this is just again to just show the scale of what could have been built here. Oh yeah, and that's why I thought it was important that you mentioned. Yeah. Because you know, and all the next door and all the other stuff going around, you know. Mentioned show the other one what yeah, yeah it's to. all a matter of perspective i understand that from a lot of the neighborhood side they're thinking of three unit is what would be appropriate or the, the max zoning and i get that and so when you see it four it feels like we're going too big but i guess all we're trying to show with this is that this is what we understand the builders and developers understood that we could do and we entertained doing something like this and then we Can we strictly quickly? did not do that <laughs> Because and we thought we maxed out at four, uh, and yeah. so that. So this is more of a twenty-plus unit building. Again, for a millisecond, we're like, "Oh, whoa, that's what's allowed here, right?" But we never drew plans for that, and so this was this was put together in the last week just to show you all what, you know, an example of what a different developer could have well, proposed. I, I would say something. Yeah, I, I think that's a point of view of an architect and point of view of a developer. We could have done this badly and we're not doing so i don't think you gain traction i'm again I, I think your building that you've done is really good but yeah. i think this is a lot clearer. i think it's not can, can I, that's your not opinion help. i guess but yeah. yeah go ahead yeah if i can weigh in i um i i appreciate the changes i i hope there's room for a, a few more I will say among the, the many conversations i have uh i've spoken with the people who develop 11 downtown, mm -hmm. uh, which is huge luxury downtown. And the quote from the developer was, we would never do that to a backyard person. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm speaking from my point of view, but I the, want you guys to- That's the to same be, developer that built on 44th Street, the apartment building, right, right next and to And when they saw the footprint in my backyard, they literally said, we would never do that to a backyard neighbor. But they neighbor. just did that on 44th Street, that same developer. Well, they were in my backyard and they said, that's really disrespectful. So I want you guys to be not seeing the connection there. Or I guess what I'm saying is, 
So I want you guys to be successful. Yeah. And I want it. The original plan was extremely disrespectful to me. There literally was no backyard rendering until right now and no thought given to the backyard. I know you said a lot about like, oh, it only appears two and a half because we set it back from the front. It's all been about the front. Um, this is my home. Again, I think 2040 is supposed so to have an interpretation. I, I guess I'm looking so, at this point because we were running really long, like so specific just, feedback just, that I, we I can get from anyone. Yep. I appreciate the changes. Okay. The things that would matter a lot to me, I do feel like I'm still bearing the brunt of your project. Um, and I think I speak on behalf of any future backyard neighbor. I am bearing the brunt of it. The things that would matter a lot to me, if you would consider continuing to revise. I know you said it got really, really hard. If you were to change the elevator to the south side, that is the tallest element, that would make a huge difference. If you would just please look at that again, we, very we have, seriously. We will again, but I, we've had so if, numerous I'll just say, meetings The things that this. would matter to me if, yep. if, to be respectful, and I think anybody in the backyard would probably feel the same as I do. The elevator, the elevator on the side would matter a ton. Moving a few more feet back would matter a ton. Just putting yeah, it out no, there. Trust me. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. The back, um, I like the white wall. It's still mostly black. Okay. Because that is my only view from my kitchen, my bedroom, my living room. I work 24-7. If it were all light, since I don't actually have real light and not looking at a black wall, that would matter a lot to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really curious who is going to upkeep, like the living wall. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That and the arborvitaes, I will tell you, the rabbits are horrible. I had all, all arborvitaes. Mm -hmm. They ate them all. I want to make sure that they're not just a year, but two and three years. Sure. Small on my list, yeah. since my whole home feels like it's being destroyed. But I did put a lot of money for me in my backyard fence in the last two years and a row of trees. Mm -hmm. Paul said something about, if we have to tear it down, you don't touch my fence. I just put it in my row of trees. I don't want to have died. Small, but big to me. Yep. Okay. What other comments? John, did you have something? I just had, and, uh, appreciate the, the you know, it's all, but it's, it's better. But remember from our perspective, you didn't have a gift showing the existing home and how much larger this becomes, and maybe that is to this point. So this sure. is better than what it would have been. Yeah. Please remember, it's a lot bigger. I I really I recognize that. I think we all recognize that. And I know you're within pole and in zone and the, the lot you're using. Yeah. Um, and I need to understand the math is 65% allowed and you're only using 40 something. I don't, my geometry is not quite working that out. So at some point, someone can explain it. I think when we review the civil plans with you and the stormwater management plans, okay. maybe that's where we That'd can look at that. Yeah. Well, I, I, if there's other like qualitative, different comments. Go ahead. Yeah. I just want to say, uh, also living in a tier, uh, living in a tier three. Corridor three? three. Oh. Corridor three. Yeah. Corridor three is yep. kind of about the zoning. But the uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just hope the other builders, which invariably would address all of our properties, is as respectful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would concur that this is uh, just the fact that you've made a bunch of changes, which yep. basically never happens. Yep. And dealing with the city is like yep. talking to your kids. So yep. it, it's, uh, I think you've done a really good yep. job. So. I want to apologize in advance if I seem frustrated at all tonight. We, we have some health problems happening with our father tonight. So I'm a little bit more sensitive than I normally am. So, but anyway, so. Um, what did we expect for communication? Because that's been part of the. Well, so that's a good question. So the, the the city requires us to get our drawings a lot farther along than these renderings that I'm showing you tonight. So we've only had time in the last week and a half since we all last met to to do the renderings, and so we haven't addressed the actual like construction documents yet. And so we wanted to get all your feedback before we 
start making that those those changes. And so we'll do our best to implement additional uh, feedback. But just in terms of actual time frame, there the next date that we would have to meet would be October 4th. We're not even going to come close to meeting that date with the city in terms of being able to submit our revisions. So we're looking at October 18th, I think is the date that we have would be our, our next opportunity to even submit something to the city. And then that puts us on the November 1st uh, planning and zoning commission meeting. And so I'm not sure the best, I mean, uh, way to communicate going forward with the entire neighborhood. I think we've got a pretty good distribution list of emails. I, I would guess I would start with that. And um, and if we need to have another meeting, we can have another meeting, but- um, Maybe we can do it through the neighborhood council. Yeah. yeah we, we meet uh, every second Monday of the month. So if someone wants to reach out and put it on our agenda, we can, for example, if you want to hear about it, you could ask us and we can reach out to chat to invite them to come to talk about it. If, yeah. if everyone kind of agreed to that, that could be a platform. Um, I mean, they they also office right there, so I'm sure you could uh, technically interrupt them. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, I've gotten a lot of private emails from people wanting to meet individually, and I, I totally understand that. But at the same time, it's really difficult to have 20 different individual meetings to talk about several of the same topics. So I, I would prefer to do it in a session like this where we can talk to multiple people at once. Other, I just don't have the free time in my yeah. personal life to do that with kids' absolutely. sports and so stuff like that. So that's a reasonable request. So the zoning and housing committee could absolutely be a, a forum of exchange in that sense. Yeah. So again, all you have to do is either email uh, info at lindenhills.org or Becky or myself or uh, I'm live on 42 Timicwitz Washburn. Just ask me and I will, uh, we can invite them and put them on the agenda. You can also attend. Uh, the zoning and housing, um, which is published in the link. Um, and you can bring it up as a new agenda item at that point as well. So uh, there's there's lots of opportunities to maintain a conversation that I think is uh, really kind of uh, unique and, and interesting and like, quite gracious. Um, and uh, I maybe- would, I would like to put something on the agenda. Sure, sure. I would like to see buildings that are compatible with the neighborhood. Um, this building to me looks like an office building or an educational building. Mm -hmm. And if you look through the histories of neighborhoods who really hung on to what they look like, he's got a new house, but it's not. It's, I, have, I have an old house. My house is 120 <laughs> years old. So I restore old houses. Um, yeah. And the yeah. interesting thing well, is. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Well, you brought it My up. point is, is that they they should be more compatible with the neighborhood, and they can be modernized and have little gimmicks that make them work. But I I just really think that the Linden Hills uh, Council is falling down on this kind of a project, and I I can give you histories from all kinds of cities. Sure. Carmel by the Sea. Why do you think a two bedroom was for a million dollars there? It's because people have kept the ambient. Yeah, well, we, there's a lot of issues to unpack and all that. And I don't necessarily know that it's the role of the zoning and housing committee to talk about aesthetic issues to that to that directness. I mean, picket fences come with a whole baggage of, of uh, all kinds of cultural implications. So we could keep talking about that. But so there are ways that we can help, though, and to point you to resources like the city to talk about what those issues are and what does it mean for a building to fit in context with the neighborhood and what does that mean to you? And you are absolutely welcome to share those thoughts and opinions to everyone here in this room, just like others that would voice the opposite opinion and say that they love modern architecture because it's so this, uh, like the whatever. Um, so so yeah, but let's keep having that conversation. It's an important one, uh, specifically to you too. It is if you want your, your property value to stay the same. Our property values have consistently gone up regardless of what the architecture is. So has your property taxes gone down? 
Well, yes, matter of fact, it's not a person come in for taxes and they took a look at it and said, oh, we're going to charge you $140,000 less. Well, anyway, um, I want to uh, just probably wrap it up since yep. we've extended half time, but um, I mean, I'll be around others if they want to, but uh, thank you all for coming. And the next step uh, is probably likely at the Zoning and Housing Committee and uh, we'll try to uh, post or, or uh, use the link or some other forms to try to make sure that there's a little bit more information. But again, welcome uh, every second Monday to uh, the Women Knows uh, Zoning and Housing Committee. Thank you all. Thank you for a lot. For yeah <laughs> <laughs> In your words, spending I did three rounds and then I ended up with my range of group, which doesn't provide me a lot of coverage. Yeah. But I'm just saying, our variety, I'm afraid, I know, the rabbit can be through. So I'm worried. I would, I would, I would like to kind of have a rabbit. They don't have any backyard, so there's no, um, they don't have any skin in the game. Like the, the people who end up owning it in these locations, that they're just going to let their backyard go. Oh, well, there will be a, um, yeah, like what you call it, like a landscape maintenance company. In other words, the four owners of the future, they're not going to be out there on the fence and stuff like that. That's no, simply not. I just feel like it's not, so you're going to care what the front looks like, but not the back. I don't know. I mean, that's, the, that's their master bedroom. So they're, I think they're going to be just as concerned about what the back looks like as you are. That they're going to be staring at when they wake up in the morning and look at at night. So, um, okay. so I, that was some more minor things. That's a future owner, I guess. But yes. yeah. Um, very nice. Uh, very good. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Like, not being no, dramatic. I, I haven't slept for two weeks. No, no, I get it. Um, I get it. I, no, I, I like hate to hear that. I really do. It. I know, and I can I tell think that a lot you. of it's personal. I know. So it's very hard for me like, to I, take all of this energy of like this way. I get it. I get it. So, so, 
The original drawing was not included. This one is still a good indication for the participants that you wanted to work with us. If I can just say again, I know you're going to be like, no, you're right. A specific help a lot, an elevator and slide would help a lot, and not so much black. That, that the black is much easier. I know, I get, I get. Um, so, like, not all black. Two yeah. feet and the elevator on the side would just. In architecture, typically the, the, the black is supposed to make it kind of go away so you don't notice it as much. The brighter the color, the more noticeable it typically is. So um, that's why we need that part of black if you should work fine. Make it not so good. Yeah, it's a good I'll, I'll, that's kind of a good of architecture in general. Uh, uh, well, I, I worked uh, a lot of architecture, a little bit of kind of work. Yeah. Like, this is my living. Yeah. So if this is all black. It's well, but in any case, like this is my living room, and then the, uh, this is my kitchen. Like, I'm all so this I've been is the focal point of my entire house. So, if I'm looking at a glass wall with an elevator, it's pretty depressing. Well, like, this is like one little yeah, hallway that's a bummer, but like, this is my entire house. Uh, all I can say is continue to look at it. Yeah, air camp promise that we're going to get the elevator on the side. Because to be perfectly honest, it just, we could not figure out a way to move it. With the topography we're dealing with, and the slope we have to have in the underground part. Um, I don't know if we can find a solution that will work that will allow us to have it. Not the whole building, or like even just a couple more feet to let me breathe would not. That's part of the process for this particular lot because of that angle, right? We are touching the bell box corner setback. I don't know how it is pointing out towards your property, but we are way off the setback, like a long way. But if we move the property itself at all, now we're all going to set back and have a fire goal. So that's the issue. So some of this was the following was the square. And this was a square lot. And you make a big step of the building down by about 15 to 20 feet. And then there was a big human shower like gap and then across the little bit. So we can get it. Yeah, they just unfortunately we're up against that. So some of this is just new site conditions that we're. Where is it starting on my property? Like, I'm sorry, like, um, how far? This is my backyard. Is it starting seven feet in? So, like, here's my property line. So, the so this this is essentially just so we tried to show this. So, so imagine your fence. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh, 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 Eric, Eric. So, yeah, me too. No, with the, He's standing right there. Brian. So you so you used to live on New York, right? With the second live around? No, 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 neither of us no more. We built a home on New York with the second live around. Oh, okay. I was thinking I was thinking Oh no, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well good job. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um so what's not shown on here is this is where your fence would be used. Yeah, so um, like that's pretty show me on this right here. <laughs> Uh, she's asking about this point. Is yeah. this how the when, when does the problem yeah, start? So how is, how is, and I think those words okay. So, this is John and Mary's garage. Yeah. Yeah. Their garage is actually about a foot wow. from the property line. Yeah. Right now. That's a good point. But Why do I still try to do this it? Good. Maybe it's by the key. essentially yeah. seven feet from yeah. approximately yeah. seven feet from Just their garage. Put it on that next channel. So it's seven, it starts seven feet into my property. So we can, That's right can here. well, this is your property, right? You're yeah. lot 11. Yeah. Yeah. Seven feet in. Sure. And, then, oh, and then 11 feet back, the new set of the old building. Okay. Yeah. You see, we have a new trans up to this. Yeah. The bump in here is 11 feet. Yeah. This is nine. Oh, 11 I used the work trip. And how long does the nine feet go? Ralphie flew in. 
for like 24 hours. And I was like, um, yeah. Oh, next month, 14, yeah. 13, 14. Okay, with your parents. Think of the width of the, Is it just your dad? Uh, my dad's up there and my aunt's up And that's there. the elevator, right? The I elevator is right here. here. Yeah. Elevator is right here. The stairs are right here. Like, my place in New York. My aunt was like, kind of like my mom anyway. When I was in New York, all of a sudden, I was like, all of you have New York. That is the biggest challenge of all the assets. At this time, I told you, you never leave your apartment. Never leave our own because the offers are boring. Those are the reasons that yeah, she's like, like, not the same. Same. No, no, I can't And again, the two foot, but now, like, down my mother, it looks like she was before it does that work. So I'm going to come up the the part she's again. Yeah, she does. You put 100 grand to renovate the place. So let's go. Take my help. I can kind of balance that. Hope you'll see that we're trying to, but at some point there's going to be there's going to be a point where we just aren't going to have. And she bought herself for her. Well, I get that, and I'm a very. I hope you get really difficult person. So that's what I'm saying. Like I don't know if you have and or the elevator would happen. I get to go see. Oh, you are. She's like, oh, this is a good place. You can come hold it. I don't think we can give without the turning away. Does she know? Not really. All right. I don't think we can get it in the car. I don't want to give you false here. here. So, I get yeah. that. But, but, but I'm um, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, like, that's well. the policy. Yeah. That's the policy. That's the ugliest thing. That's the ugliest thing. That is the majority yeah. of my house. Yeah. Like, yeah. again, yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. where I am 13 hours a day in my living room, that's what I look at. So, and I really appreciate it. I'm trying to be respectful, but like, the whole. So, 